Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, the, the edge, you know, the advent of IoT devices, as well as the need for cloud providers and CDM providers to get closer to their customers is really creating a groundswell of data that is all getting fed into uh, edge data centers. Uh, joining me on the light board to talk about that is uh, Cameron Crandall. Cam Cameron's with uh, Kingston. Cameron, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. Happy to be here. So let's uh, let's dive into this. Uh, what what can we do to help out these edge data centers? So we're seeing the SSD use and edge computing uh, really ramp up today, and we're seeing edge computer networks showing up uh, in various areas of our business. Content delivery networks is a big one. Uh, IoT is another big one, and we can kind of talk about how we're seeing SSDs being used uh, in both of these areas today. Okay, and so the in both of these use cases, this all eventually feeds into that edge data center, right? Correct, and okay. then ultimately to the cloud in a lot of cases. Okay, so what's the role of SSD there? So in IoT, um, it's in a couple of places. So it's it's at the sensor, right? Okay. So we uh, and the sensor could be a computer, uh, it could be a small disk in the ground, um, you name it, it can be anything. IoT encompasses a lot. Right. Um, so we'll, for lack of a better term. Uh, sensor. There's a there's a storage device at the sensor. Okay. Um, and then at the edge server, uh, we've generally got a larger scale uh, storage in the form of rack mount enclosures. Mm -hmm. uh, but the important thing here is we need very fast performance here mm -hmm. uh, in the storage because we're taking in typically a lot of data, um, and then we need to move that out to to the edge servers, which need to be fast as well. So we need to have. Uh, very good performance at the sensor, you know, a storage device that's able to keep up with a lot of incoming, you know, writes that are coming into the well, sensor. Because I, I know that we only have a, a light board that's this big, but obviously there wouldn't be three sensors, right? There might be three. Well, there'd be hundreds three, or yeah, thousands yeah. of sensors. Right? And, and that aggregated send or ingest into the edge, uh, edge data centers would really cause us the challenge, right? Correct, and yeah. it's really important that we select the right SSDs uh, for these applications because okay. you don't want to just put any SSD at a sensor and you might think well a sensor's pretty pretty basic it, mm -hmm. it, that's not the case you can sometimes have you know uh, large amounts of writes coming into a sensor uh, feeding in data from whatever it's sensing and then bringing it out to the server so we need to have really fast SSDs here that are designed for this type of an application and then out at the edge server we're typically doing a lot of write uh, sorry a lot of reading here okay. so the data is coming in and then it's being read out so we need to have the proper SSDs here as well uh, so selection of the SSDs in this environment is critical and is it being read for local processing or read to be sent to the cloud or both both okay uh, there's local processing that's going on but ultimately typically in IoT it's going out to the cloud gotcha. um, to the, the to the uh, company that's that's processing that data. Gotcha. Okay, so then how, what about CDN? So CDN's a, a real common one. We're all getting our, our, our TV from apps today right. uh, as opposed to through the networks. Um, so in big metropolitan areas, uh, the content delivery network companies need to be placing their content closer to uh, big population. So mm -hmm. here we've got the illustration of a large city, customers, possibly you and I, mm -hmm. um, our TV, we're, we're streaming that data, but we need to have the, the storage and where that content's coming from close in uh, geographic proximity um, to where our users are using that data. We can't have you and I in LA and that data coming from you know Kansas or New York. Right, sure. And then the, uh, what are the attributes of the SSDs here? Are they, are they about the same as they are there? What's the? It's somewhat similar. So we're doing a lot of reading over here. T typically the content is, uh, is loaded periodically, so you don't have a tremendous amount of writes. But as you can imagine, you're doing a lot of reading out from uh, you and I, right, right at our, at our, in our living rooms. Uh, we're, we're getting that content from servers that are, are local. To yeah, I would think that would be a very read intensive workload. It is, workload. it is. Okay. But we can't just use any SSD here, right? Okay. We need to be using enterprise class SSDs for these applications and make sure we're not using you know, the wrong SSD. Right, and so, let's, so we've talked about some very specific characteristics of, of SSD. What are you guys doing at Kingston to kind of fine tune for that environment? So we design our enterprise SSDs to deliver uh, performance more around consistency than trying to reach big numbers for say a data sheet or to put on our website. Gotcha. So um, some examples of that are um, uh, I.O. delivery, so the, the I.O. that we get from the drive, mm -hmm. uh, as well as latency, the time it takes for that command to do one, you know, one round trip uh, command. So uh, instead of trying to reach you know, a giant number on a data sheet of say 
you know, 550 megabytes a second. Mm -hmm. um, we want to do more consistent deliveries of, of performance. So uh, instead of you know hitting 550 uh, in our peaks, maybe we're going to do 520 megabytes a second, but we're going to do that consistently all the time. Yeah, and I would think cons I mean, in both of these environments, consistent delivery is probably the more valuable attribute, right? It is. It is definitely. I mean, in 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 the in the in the client computing world, you know, what you and I do on our computers every day, this might be a benefit to us. Uh, but in the data center, our customers want more consistency sure. around around this delivery. Yeah, I mean, if I'm used to it taking three seconds to have the movie start playing, the fact that it happens in one second occasionally is a, is no big deal. But if it takes three minutes, I'm kind of frustrated, right? Correct. So Cameron, obviously the other thing we talked about a little bit here is the, the read heavy nature, especially in CDN and kind of the write heavy nature here and read heavy nature. Here. How do you guys optimize for those different types of environments? So uh, in our enterprise line of SSDs, we're uh, again tuning for that performance consistency. So the way we, we, we write our firmware algorithms, um, it's more designed around delivering that, that consistent level of IO. We don't want to have you know, Christmas tree patterns in our I.O. delivery, this can cause problems in, in both of these applications. Sure. And for client computing applications, we can have this and it's okay. But for uh, data center use, we want to make sure that the, 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 the data flow that we're delivering is coming in at a very consistent manner. Again, both for uh, the I.O. as well as latency. Latency is, a, is key as well. Uh, it would sh if we have latency problems, it's going to show up here. Um, very much so here. It can even show up here as well. So. Uh, the way we design the SSDs uh, during our development is really around um, that, that, firmware, uh, that firmware coding. Uh, we've also got some hardware features on the drive where we use big DRAM caches. Uh, that enables us to smooth out these uh, delivery lines and so forth. So it, I was just going to ask you about that. So uh, bigger DRAM caches is one thing. Without giving away, the, I guess, the secret sauce, give me some ideas of what some of the things you're doing in firmware. Uh, so in firmware, we're tuning um, the way we uh, uh, behave in a, in a garbage collection scenario. Okay. So uh, SSDs have to do background operations sure. to keep themselves clean mm -hmm. uh, and keep the right amplification factor low. Um, so when we, when we do our, our garbage collection uh, routines is, is critical. Um, the host commands that come in from the operating system uh, to do its own internal house cleaning on the drive. Uh, because we're power fail protected on our SSDs, mm -hmm. we can select whether or not we, we do that command that's coming in from the host, or we acknowledge that it was done, um, and, but we don't necessarily do it right at that uh, point in time. Gotcha. So there's, there's a lot going on in, in firmware and in, in the host commands that are coming in from the host, and the way our firmware behaves is going to determine what this data flow looks like. Gotcha. So, uh, we're very uh, uh, conscious of that in the development of those drives. So, so it's a combination of, I guess, I guess software, although in, in the form of firmware, and then also in how you physically design the drive itself. Yeah, big DRAM caches. Uh, we use over provisioning on the on the flash itself. Sure. So even though you're buying a 480 gigabyte drive, there's actually five 12 gigabytes of, of physical flash there. Uh, the more flash space we have, the controller has more room to to do its its kind of background operations and. All of that helps smooth out this performance delivery. And, and I guess for me, the big takeaway is is to really pay attention to this kind of consistent performance over peak performance, because that's that's what you want to make sure is going to happen. Is you want your SSD to perform the same under load, right? Exactly, and we call that quality of service. Mm -hmm. It's the predictability of performance from the SSD, and that's what we design around. Okay, great, Cameron. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Well, there you have it. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thanks for joining us today.